Last time we got our Panasonic 3DO fixed. We repaired the CD drive in here, recapped the power supply. It's working nicely. Currently playing a bit of Street Fighter 2. There is one other little mod that I want to do. We can improve the video quality of this machine ever so slightly by forcing it into 240p. The video encoder chip in here outputs everything at 480i but the 3DO itself renders everything internally at 240p. We can do a very simple mod to force that video encoder chip into 240p to improve this picture quality slightly. Let's get started. So I've stripped the 3DO down again and this is the video encoder chip. The one we're going to be working with today. And what we need to do is lift pin 59. That's this one here, second in from the right. At the minute there is 5 volts going to this pin, which puts this chip into interlace mode. If we lift this and run ground to this pin, that will put the video chip into progressive mode, giving us our 240p output. Now we are going to put a switch in, probably mounted on the back of the console somewhere, so that we can vary between 5 volts and ground running to this. When this chip is in 240p progressive mode, the system can actually run a bit faster and a few games wind up broken because of that. The likes of Another World is one of those games in particular that just runs far too quick. So what we'll do is we will take 5 volts off this pod here. We will take ground off this via here. We'll run them up to a switch that we'll put at the back somewhere. And then we can switch this pin between ground and 5 volts. Right. I'm going to lift this pin off camera just because it's a bit delicate to do it. All, we'll, all we will be doing is heating the pin with the solder and iron and I am going to use our little sharp knife. Get that in behind the pin and try to edge it forward. I don't want to risk damaging anything here by trying to work around the camera. So let me do that and then we'll be back. So there's our pin lifted. I always hate doing that. You always run the risk that the pin will break off. Then we would be in serious trouble. I've cut three bits of wire to length here. So we're going to attach one to this pin. One to this pod here for five, five volts. And one to this via here for ground. That's our three wires connected. Next thing to do is to drill a wee hole up here in the back of the case to mount the switch. I'll do that, then we'll be back to solder it all up. So I drilled a wee hole here and have my switch mounted. Don't think you need to see me drilling the hole. It's not exactly rocket science. Just go through with a small drill bit first and then go through with the larger bit. That's the easiest way to do it without risking damaging the plastic. I've also just put a little bit of hot glue on these two points here just to help secure everything, especially where that uh, leg is lifted on this chip. It always will be weaker after being lifted like that, so I just like to make sure that it's never going to break off with this wire being moved about. The glue holds it nice and steady. So this is the one going to the chip. We need to run this to the center leg on our switch. This is our five volt. I want the switch 
5 volt that way pointing towards the power supply so we need to run that to this side of the switch and then pointing away from the power supply that will be ground and this one needs to run to that side of the switch very simple I will get this wired up now then we'll be back to test it Sometimes when you're doing mods to these consoles, you learn your lessons the hard way. Instead of following diagrams, I really should have tried to measure these pods first. So where I thought we had attached the 5 volt to. Well, no, that was actually another ground. And because I had hot glued it, the only way to get that off was, well, to cut through the glue. And uh, unfortunately, in doing so, I managed to rip this pad off. The only, uh, the only relief we have with this is that this is an unused component. So... While it is damaged, I suppose in the long term, there's no real harm done. So I had said you need to connect to that side of this. That's wrong. It's that side. That is the 5 volt line. Not this one. What's that old saying? Measure twice, cut once. I suppose that applies to electronics as well. Right, so we are back together again. Well, loosely for now anyway, just to test. We have the switch, let's put it to interlace mode. So the switch is pointing towards the power supply. That means our five volts is going through to the BT chip. So this is as you were, let's power on. So everything seems to be working fine with the, with the switch at interlace mode. Let's flick it across to progressive, 240p. It is very hard to tell any difference now on a moving image like this, well, and especially through the camera. What we'll do in a minute though, is I will do some direct capture from the 3DO and uh, we'll try to compare a few stills. Well, everything's working fine. So I'm happy enough. I will uh, just power this off, put all this back together tidy it all up and uh, then we'll connect up to the capture card we'll do a bit of direct capture to see if we can notice any difference in the video quality okay so we're watching the Street Fighter 2 intro here 480i on the left 340p on the right so let me just pause the video at this point so hopefully you can see that on the right hand side, around Tommy's neck, you can see quite a bit more detail in the 240p. Equally on Chun Li's arm, you can see the detail just a bit clearer on the 240p. Overall, I think it's just a slightly sharper image. If I pause it here, just while Ryu is doing his fireball, you can see in his hair, the detail just looks a bit better, and on his arm, everything just looks that wee bit sharper.
Round one, fight! Pause it again here, just one more time. You can certainly see in the background, the details are a lot sharper on the 240p, that bird thing in the middle. You can see a lot more detail on its wings. Equally, the rock face in the background just looks a lot more detailed, a lot sharper on 240p. And even the characters themselves, just everything looks a lot sharper. Well that's it finished, it does improve the picture quality slightly as we've seen in the close up captures. Is it worth doing? Well it is quite an easy mod after all if you connect everything up to the right pads. So I think personally yes, it's worth investing in. You can do an RGB mod on this console as well, albeit that is slightly more involved. There's quite a few wires to solder onto the board. It's something I'll maybe look at doing in the future, but for now, I'm quite happy that I have my 3DO working in 240p. I had to play a bit of Street Fighter 2. See you next time!